Sup, long time no see, there have been a couple of new projects we had to deal with and one of them is this video which Generation Z can easily call a bunch of life hacks for shooting good night photos on smartphones. Hold on, you might say, many modern smartphones have a special night mode for that already. Yes, but even with this mode you have to act properly to get the best results and nobody is saying that we will cut it to just auto settings. So, welcome to TechFellas, my name is Bogdan, and let's zoom into it. As the main photo gun, we used Vivo X50 Pro that proves to have the remarkable night mode. When you push the button, it takes a number of shots with different exposure values and then stitches them into one photo. It will get the darker areas from the bright shots that are the best in telling us what we do in the shadows and the light areas from the darker shots. As a result, we get details in both of these fields. The first thing that might be challenging for the operator is to hold the camera in one position motionless for a few seconds, otherwise they will be smearing on the photo. From experience, I can give you a piece of advice to focus not on a lantern or a shining sign, but on a dimly lit object. Just believe me, in most cases this will give the best results. Such photos are better for editing in a Lightroom app or are mostly fine to be immediately posted on Instagram. Something more impressive will happen if you use the shooting facility and your headpiece. Just give the camera as much time as possible to take the full range of shots and in the end you'll get the cleaner picture and post-processing or noise reduction won't affect it too much. Long story short, the main goal is holding the smartphone in precisely the same position. One of the ways to go is to use the surrounding, rest your hands by a tree or a bench, a bridge railing, a wall, a column, wherever the thing that won't move and will give your body a solid grab on a surface. Some phones have got a tripod mode, so if you believe that the phone won't move, use it. The shooting process will take significantly longer, but due to lower ISO, less noise and less shakiness, the result will be better. Basically, if you tend to make snap decisions and rarely go out at night with the specific purpose of shooting something, follow that advice and use the surrounding. For everyone else, please love and favor the tripod. In fact, for just a photo from a smartphone, such a big fella is an overkill. You can find a much simpler one for 20 to 30 bucks or to buy this thing that is a tripod and a selfie stick at the same time. Having this makes your photo shooting life even easier, so all that is left is to include maximum imagination and get rid of laziness. Moreover, unlike handheld shooting with resting your hands on some object, you can be sure there will definitely not be any smearing and you can set the timer to complete eliminate it. When shooting at night, it is, by the way, very useful in any situation, since while pressing the button you always jerk your phone a bit. The tripod not only improves the image quality, but also gives more freedom to your hands, allowing you to use something else than a common night mode. After Pixel 4 presentation, manufacturers started brawling in astrophotography. Vivo X50 Pro also has this stuff in a built-in camera app. Ideally, you should take on stars in a perfectly clear sky, because the moving clouds will either hide them, or at worst, you will get way non-sexy grayish spots, so keep this in mind. Vivo, by the way, made a special mode for shooting our lonely and yet the best ever natural satellite. Unfortunately, we did not catch the full moon when creating this video, but we still managed to shoot something. Now let's set all these different modes aside and get into more subtle details that may increase your time spent just on one photo. Almost all smartphones nowadays already have manual shooting settings in the so-called Pro modes and for the camera to see more at night than you do, we were granted by two wonderful tools, a shutter speed and ISO. The LUT1 should be increased when you need the sharpest shots with the less motion blur as possible, in the presence of moving objects such as people or cars. The payment for such a luxury is a noise, but you can get rid of it in the Lightroom app on a smartphone or a computer. Slow shutter speed is a much more interesting thing, because with it you can, first of all, shoot very dark locations, avoiding hellish noise, and secondly, use the features of the optics to your advantage. Have you seen pics where people have kinda neon signs or symbols hovering near them in the air? 
this is filmed at a slow shutter speed and can be captured on an absolutely regular smartphone. What about these fiery lines from the car lights? This is also a shot taken under the same technique. In case of Vivo X50 Pro, the imaginative shutter can remain open for up to 32 seconds. And the minimum ISO is only 50, that allows you to implement almost any idea. By the way, on digital cameras, people usually shot the night sky at a slow shutter speed. We tried to get the same quality photos as can be shot with the astrophoto mode, but to be fair, we did not manage to achieve even a near roughly close results using manual settings. Overall, the night shooting topic is endless. We could talk about reflections, about the fact that bokeh from light sources is three times tastier than a strawberry pancake, but the airtime is not a rubber. And many things I think now you can pick up by yourself if you have such desire. In any case, today I've told you about the most valuable life hacks in night shooting. And this is it for today. If you like this video and actually find it useful, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!